Everything frightens me, and it's well that it does. Fear is a good friend to the hunted. It's kept me alive this long. The dead are fearless, and I don't care to join them. Grim Dark is currently one of the most popular subgenres of fantasy, but having not read a whole lot of it, it's one that I always attribute to those gritty, depressing, military fantasy books with grey characters that you don't really like or trust, but with a realistic world and themes and a plot that keeps you going. I was under the impression this genre didn't have much humor or light moments. And usually I prefer my characters to be a bit more redeemable. I was not expecting this book to change my mind on the grimdark genre. So it was a surprise to me when I picked up The Blade itself, which was recommended to me by a lot of you guys to be one of the best grimdark fantasy books, and I discovered that despite all of its pessimism and dark moments, it's also unexpectedly light at times, and very amusing. These books are filled with humor and character. I was, I was not expecting to like these characters that at first seem so unlikable as much as I did. It's definitely the best character-driven book I've read in a good while, um, and it's very character-driven. In fact, the plot in the first book isn't really there, you don't really know what's going on, it's mostly just focused on the characters. And it's a good thing that Abercrombie writes characters very well. It's especially impressive that this was his debut novel. Anyway, here is my spoiler-free review for The Blade Itself by Joe Abercrombie. This is book one in the first Law Trilogy, after which there is several standalone novels taking place in the same universe, and then there is the Age of Madness Trilogy, which will see its third book release later in September of this year, so I gotta get caught up. Now I started reading the physical copy for The Blade itself, and then later on I switched over to the audiobook. This is one case where I feel like the narrator just adds so much to the overall experience. Stephen Pacey gives a lot of personality to these characters, specifically the the slight lisp that he gives to Glockta is just so perfect. Um, anyway, if you do like audiobooks, I would say they're the best way to experience this series. The story follows three main characters, starting off with Logan Ninefingers, whose introduction immediately throws us into action as he's separated from his crew and is chased through the forest by a horde of Shanka. Shanka, also known as Flatheads, are something between a man and an animal, an orc-like creature with twisted claw-like hands. Right from the get-go, we see Logan fighting to survive, which is something that's pretty much the norm for him. Say one thing for Logan Ninefingers, say he's a fighter. I know some people don't really like books starting with a life or death fight scene because you don't even know who these characters are yet, but for me, it made me instantly hooked and invested in seeing this character's survival. The Bloody Nine is a Northman with a fearsome reputation that he no longer wants anything to do with, but that he can't really seem to escape from. He's got a very dark past that we only see the extent of much later on, but despite his violent life, Logan is probably the kindest and most selfless character in this entire novel, and I would say he's the closest thing to the hero. A mysterious ancient magi named Baez returns and is seeking Logan's skills for his own unexplained purposes, and while Logan gets caught up in the mess of everything, you really can't help but root for him. Next is Inquisitor Sandan Glockta, a formerly renowned swordsman who after being taken as a prisoner of war and tortured is now left crippled and bitter and serves the Union as a professional torturer himself, cutting treason out of the Union one confession at a time. He has a lot of hatred for his fellow comrades who he feels like abandoned him uh, in captivity and who still try to ignore him, but most of all, he harbors anger for the person who invented stairs. Being a torturer for the Royal Inquisition, many see him as a cruel and repulsive guy, but we get all of Glockta's deliciously cynical thoughts. And we see him ask himself over and over again, why do I do this? And we ask the same question, Glockta. Most people who've read this book agree that Glockta is an incredibly interesting character. He's one that I was not expecting to like so much. In fact, I kind of thought we were reading from the antagonist head when we first got his perspective. Little did I know, I was reading from the perspective of one of my favorite fantasy protagonists. A lot of the humor in this series comes from Glockta's inner monologues, which like I said, are really brought to life by Stephen Pacey's narration. Next we have Giselle Dan Luther, an arrogant, vain, selfish noble 
woman and talented fencer. There's a whole short section of him just admiring his jawline in a mirror, thinking on how superior it is to other jaws. He's really that type of character that you just want to punch in the face at first. He's very, very self-absorbed, but we do see his character begin to grow, and I began to really enjoy getting his point of view, and there's also plenty of humor when it comes to his scenes. Abercrombie's characters are full of depth, and one of the things that makes them feel so human is that we're never quite sure what they're going to do next. All these characters appear pretty unlikable on paper. There's no clear heroes and no clear villains, but Abercrombie does not demonize any of them. They all have their moments of decency that make you sympathize and root for them. It's pretty much a character study of morally questionable individuals. They might not be the best people, but at least they're in the process of changing, or at least questioning their bad choices. One thing I noticed that Abercrombie is a master of is character voice. Um, you'll, you'll start a new chapter and immediately after reading a few lines, you're going to know whose point of view you're reading from without even seeing their name because they're all just so distinct and even the writing style kind of switches up. Like for instance, Logan's is more gritty with some contradictions and bad verbiage here and there. Uh, then Glockta is littered with inner monologue and Giselle, it just feels more pretentious. I also really enjoyed how each character sees the other through completely different lenses. This was just really fun to read and being able to pull all of this off as well as he did really showcases Abercrombie's abilities. The world building does take a back seat. Like I said, this is very character driven, so we don't get a lot of this world. We do learn about some mythologies and bits of lore, but it's very hard to picture where these different nations are when there's no there's no map in the book fantasy books gotta have a map there is a fan-made map thankfully the world does get a lot more detail as you continue with this series but in this first book there's not a whole lot now because of the plot that isn't really well defined it does sort of feel like this is a setup book just introducing you to the characters and usually i do not like setup books but somehow this just works so well in this case. I, I did not mind at all that this felt like a setup. I just enjoyed being introduced to these characters. I, I really didn't mind at all. Now, if there's one way to describe Abercrombie's writing style, I would say it feels very cinematic. The perspective is honed very close in on its characters and their thoughts, which really benefits when it comes to the fight scenes, making each hit hurt as much as it can. And these fight scenes mostly come from Logan's point of view, where at the end of each one, he stumbles away murmuring to himself, I'm still alive, I'm still alive, like he has thousands of times before. I have heard a lot of people compliment his prose, which I think you kind of have to be more specific on, because overall, I feel like his writing style, it's not really anything too special. It's not lyrical like Rothfuss, or exposition heavy like Jordan. It's pretty basic and to the point, but it works perfectly with this story. And I feel like the First Law trilogy, like the Mistborn books, is very accessible. The prose isn't overly dense and filled with filler. It's quickly paced and it's perfect for both veterans and people new to the genre. Now I usually like to bring in some criticisms to balance out my reviews, but in this case I just didn't have a lot of criticisms for the Blade itself, other than the fact that it does feel like a prequel at times, like it's setting up for the adventure to follow. Luckily my interest in the characters kept that from feeling like a negative thing, though there was one character named Pharaoh who in this book I felt like came off as just overly edgy and I just didn't really care for that, but other than that I don't have a lot of criticisms for this book. So as a three act story, book one is the setup that establishes the characters' personalities, their motivations, and their internal conflicts on a very intimate level. It's not until the second book when things really begin to get ramped up. Overall, what I'm trying to get at is that Joe Abercrombie writes some of the best characters in fantasy, and if you're hesitant about starting Grimdark and you don't really know if you're going to like it, then I would recommend starting with the Blade itself. And if you're new to fantasy in general, I think it's very accessible and this is a great place to start. So I'd recommend The Blade Itself by Joe Abercrombie. Let me know in the comments if you want to see me make more First Law related videos, and if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. You can check out my Etsy or my Teespring if you want to buy some channel merch, or head over to my Patreon if you want to support the channel.